Welcome back. Running with the Bears podcast going into week four. It's uh, September 28th, 2024. Adam and Josh. And uh, last time we talked, we were all, oh, yeah, the Bears are going to beat the Colts. Well, guess what? They didn't. It was very sad. Everyone was very upset after the game. And uh, now we're back to it uh, Saturday before the Rams. And uh, before we can talk about the Rams game, we got to talk about what went wrong against the Colts. Josh. Coaching. That's what went wrong. And the reality of it is the Bears got outcoached. When you look at this offense, you had first and goal at the, what, three-yard line, four-yard line? You ran it from shotgun four times. Not once. Once, okay. Twice, I guess. Three times you're pushing it. Four times, get out of here. Line Go up back to Seattle. Formation, knock them on their ass and get it into the end zone. I'm not some offensive genius. I'm not some guru. I've never been an offensive coordinator. But why not give that a shot at least once? And so Your players are having a players-only meeting with you to tell you how bad you screwed up. That's when you know you stink. Yeah. Like, tough, I, tough, what tough what baffles me is that, okay, I looked at a stat the other day. Since 1980, you know how many top 10 offenses the Bears have had in yards and points? Take a guess. Um, I'm going to go with three. You're exactly right. Three. You know how many times they made the playoffs? Uh, One time. Oh, like with the top 10 offense? And they won the Super Bowl that year. They can't even get an offense right and make the playoffs. So this is a franchise full of incompetency. We've known that forever. And they just continue to prove it time and time again. This is a franchise that hired a CFL coach over Bruce Arians. Yeah. I mean, what what more do you need to prove? Like, you know, let's not hire Cliff Kingsbury, who knows Caleb Williams really well. He he fades in the second half of of the season. I understand that. Fine. We had gone in the second half of the season, and if he faded then, we would have been screwed. But we were, or we might have been already anyway, knowing this team. It's just time and time again, we see inept coaching ruin this team. You had one good coach since Ditka. One. Yeah. And you fired him after you won 10 games. We'll see how, they, how uh, Waldron bounces back. I, I still want him to do well. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's I'm tired of this and you and I can both agree. It's just, yeah. inept. I, the mean, bears I'm right now down. lost both of those, both of those games by less than a touchdown with good coaching. They're three and up. And no, I don't even, and there's, the I, I can't just, I, I can't say it another way. If you had a good coach and a good offensive line, you're three and all right now sitting at the top of the NFC East with Minnesota. NFC North. Uh, yeah. And it, uh, NFC North. Yeah. It, it's uh, obviously, frustrating you know they're they're doing these they're not using deandre swift the right way uh that's there is a right way to use him there's a reason detroit cut him he's not good without a good offensive line he runs to the outside what you want is a guy who runs in between the tackles in between the guards that's not not his game deandre swift he never got cut he, he just didn't come back. He went to the Eagles, and he had a career year. Are they, I think they drafted that um, – they drafted the running back instead of bringing him back. Yeah, yeah. So, the, the, But big difference. He, he did not get cut. He went to the Eagles. He had a great year. They used him very differently than the Bears or Lions did, and they're able to do that because they have the best offensive line in the NFL. But important distinction to make. They did not cut him. He had injury issues. They he he was effective in the passing game. Uh, it's it's not, but he's not a power back, and you can't ask him to be a power back. You have so the, the but Herbert. You there have the kind Johnson. of the issue. You had a power running game the last two seasons, which worked for you very effectively. Now you had Justin Fields, and I understand that he's a he's a running. He was a runner who has helped establish the team's running game, and they were top two in the NFL two years in a row, but you completely changed that scheme to a guy who needs help with blocking and you can see without that blocking, he's just not as effective. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, no uh, running back or quarterback is going to have that much success unless it's Barry Sanders or Walter Payton or some absolute legend without a decent offensive line. 
But um, yeah, you know, I, I'd like to see him use more in space, use more in the passing game, put him out wide, like use your weapons effectively. Now, what I do think is going to be a huge help indirectly is actually Keenan Allen. He's going to come back and being able to get some quick passes to just shorten the change or, or the chains, you know, where you're yeah. not going from second and long and third and long every time. If you're able to just have more, you know, if you're able to stay ahead of the sticks, it changes what you can kind of design in the run game, obviously in the pass game. And so I want to see what kind of impact he brings. But, yeah, the Bears offensive line, they have their hands full against a pretty good young Rams defensive line this week. And I do think that the Bears will win this game. I think they should win this game. I think it is a must win. But if they do not protect the quarterback and if they do not at least establish the running game a little bit, the viral stats of DeAndre Swift's rushing attempts this year are a national embarrassment. However, I'm not giving up on DeAndre. I love the signing. I still love the signing. They have to use him right. They have to protect him. They Caleb's running for his life. The offensive line stinks. The the play design is questionable. But they did start to get it rolling in the second half against the Colts. Caleb had the best game he's had as a bear. He had two bad interceptions, unfortunately, but he had two touchdowns. Three I would up, say he had one. Again. I would not count the second one as a really bad pick. I would say it's not the best decision to make, but Rome should have caught that ball. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't, The first one was bad. He didn't have his feet set. His feet weren't set. He kind of was throwing without any footwork involved. It was a very weak throw. So that first one was a very bad one. That was a rookie mistake. I'm, Second I'm one, he'll learn from it. That he just has his swagger now. I'm hoping that Caleb has his confidence now, and now we start to see this Caleb Williams is going to sling it for 300 yards a game. And uh, this is a defense that they can do that against. The Rams secondary, uh, I don't think. 30th in the league in passing yards allowed. Yeah, they're like Caleb should be able to go out there and sling that thing. Uh, the Bears have an elite receiving core, <laughs> one healthy. And so if, if it's DJ, Rome, who's really starting to put it together, Keenan Allen, Cole Komet was used way more. That was a positive I saw. The Bears should be able to move the ball, but they need to pick up. What sucks is these sputtering starts where they're not getting anything going until the second half. And that has been an issue for as long as I remember under Eberflus. You and know, so and the thing that I want to see, start. you're playing the you're playing the worst defense in the NFL. My correction, you they're 29th in passing yards allowed, 30th in touchdowns allowed. They've given up seven touchdowns, they've one interception. So that means you've only you've forced two fumbles. Good for you. Like I just the Bears are not a not a very fumble heavy team, unless you count Bales Jones. <laughs> so but you're facing the worst defense in the league. The worst. 32nd in yards allowed, and 31st in points allowed. You have no excuse but to score at least 24 points in this game. If you can't – you're just playing a team that's given off 30 a game. If you can't score at least 20 against this team, I don't know what to tell you. That tells me that's a coaching problem. That's an offensive line problem. And that means – you know who's on the clock? Mr. Eberflus, get out of town. If you lose this game, you're on the hot seat. Yeah. Yeah, and I would hate to see it because I don't want to see the cycle of suck continue. And part of the cycle of suck is getting these young quarterbacks and then they immediately have a different coach and then they they struggle and they don't have any consistency. And it's like if you're trying to plant a garden in a middle a bunch of gravel, like you need some soil, Basically. man. You need some fertile ground. And so it's not a conducive place for these young quarterbacks. So uh, I feel like half my face is disappearing. I'm gonna bring the blinds down here for the camera. Excuse me. I thought what it was, was the angel singing to you. Yes, singing about <laughs> the uh, I think that's a little better now. Um, but yeah, it's the cycle of suck, Josh. I don't want the Bears to – I want Eberflus to do well. I'd rather Eberflus do well and they get it together and, it, it you know, it's still just week 
three, or we just finished week three. Like, there's a lot of season left. A lot of time to turn this around. But you got to get to two and two. And you got to beat the teams you're better than. And the, the Bears are better than the Colts. They lost to the Colts. They're better than a lot of the teams they're going to face these next few weeks. But it's time to beat the teams you're better than. Because that has been... This is the chance. We talked about last week. This is the chance to get hot, to gather momentum. Oh, they can uh, easily be 4-2 and two going into the bye week. I think that's a very possible thing. The thing is, I had them at 4-2 and two going into the bye week, but what I didn't expect was all this, pardon my friend, all this crap. Yeah. It's just mind-blowing to me that they keep having the same crap happen over and over again. And the, the hardest thing is, you're in a must-win situation now, and if you don't win on Sunday, you're going to face a Panthers team that very well could be coming in two and two, and with some swagger because they got a new quarterback right now. And I don't want to face a team that's playing with swagger. I do not, because that's easily one. That could be one. That could be one and four right there. So. And, and you know, I, the Bears right now, the main problem, you and I both agree, is coaching. But I will say this. It's also the man upstairs. I'm blaming Ryan Poles as well. You had a job this offseason. I wasn't mad at sign, uh, getting Roma Dunze. Did we really absolutely 100% need Keenan Allen? No. You could have spent that money on a tackle, on a guard. You could have cut Nate Davis if you wanted to because you knew he sucked. You still kept him. You could have done something, signed a competent center. There were so many available, and you chose to just lay an egg and go, well, this is good enough. What, yeah, this, what, what is this? Yeah, it, it, it was disappointing. And um, they did draft to get, you know, add some depth to the offensive line, but I, I'm wondering if. Yeah, but that guy's like, not the third round pick. He's not ready. He's not no. going to be ready this year, most likely. No. Uh, yeah, I, I that's a development yeah. project, and that's okay. Yeah, a development project's okay for a year, but you could have drafted, you could have done something, and you chose not to do anything. Offer David back to Ari, he gets to keep the uh Hancock building. Hey, come play two. I don't even think Bakhtiari. The reason I think Bakhtiari hasn't been signed, I don't know if he'd pass a physical. Yeah, yeah, I think he's like. And I, I think that's the I, main reason nobody signed him. Done. Yeah, I think that's the main reason. So, you know, as much as I'd like an ex-Packer like that, who was a great player at one point, there's a reason he's not playing anywhere yeah. right now. Let me let me ask you this. Uh, let's just kind of get into some X factors against the Rams. Obviously, the Bears need a win. Um, what's got to go well? Cole Komet's got to get the football again at least eight times, at least eight targets. I think Cole, you have a great tight end. Cole Komet is a fantastic tight end. We saw it last year. We know what he brings. He's a good blocker. Unless you put, you know, a defensive end on him and let him go one on one and just shove him in, the, in, in his way, then, yeah, that doesn't work. But, you know, if you can't tell him a little mad about last week, I'm still mad about it. But... Get Cole Komet plenty of targets. Let him be that glue that Caleb can throw to underneath or wherever you need when he's when he's got some time. Well, I Let that trust continue to build. Too. Like, not to cut you off, but I, I agree with what you're saying completely. But, yeah, I think, like, Cole Komet and Keenan Allen, use your security blankets. And I would say I'd give Roshan Johnson at least 12 carries. I'm giving Roshan at least 12. You got to see what this guy is worth. This yeah, is his week. second year here. He's a good physical running back. He can play in between, you know, running in between. That's what you can use him for. But I want to see him in the goal line. Well, the they said Khalil Herbert's going to be their goal line back. Khalil Herbert's not even going to be here next year. They, they said that uh, Roshan's going to get an extended look. Last week, he was targeted five times, four catches. He had eight. He looked very and good. And so, what I'd like to see if the Bears want to do run the game, run the ball the way they have, then use Roshan for the draws. Use Roshan for the more physical running. Have 
if you want to use DeAndre Swift like Darren Sproles, go for it. You know, I'm okay with that. I don't want that because you're spending eight million dollars on the guy, but it's clearly not working with the schemes that you're put with that you're running. So you've got to figure something out. Don't ask Darren Sproles. Or I'm sorry. Uh, don't ask. You know, uh, DeAndre Swift to be Adrian Peterson. He's not. Let DeAndre, DeAndre Swift, Swift. Be DeAndre Swift. You know, and I think that that's a huge part of what the Bears are missing. It's just, it's astounding to me how coaching can be this baffling and just struggling this massively beginning well, of the season. Waldron was about ready to have a stroke on the sidelines. I think Shane Waldron was a bad hire. We'll right see. The guy's got the super, he's got a Lombardi trophy, Josh. That's the thing. You know, like I, I believe in. I want to believe in it. I want it to work, but yeah, I got my concerns now. But his resume is good enough where I still am like, all right, hopefully it's just a tough little stretch. But yeah, man, the seat should be getting hot. I just hate to even have the conversations about replacing coaches in week four. Like every game they've been in it, but they need to turn the corner now. I feel like, oddly enough, because he hasn't been the problem either, but it's almost like Caleb didn't really have the oven fully preheated. It was like this this warm up that took the first two and a half weeks of the season because we didn't even see this guy until the second half of that Colts game, or maybe like through into the second quarter of that Colts game. But if Caleb can be Caleb, then it's going to be a completely different situation. But he missed throws in Week One. He missed throws in Week Two. Uh, both those games winnable, all three of these games winnable. But the thing is, that's the same thing about last year where it's like, oh, the Bears really could have beat the Packers. Yeah, well, they didn't. Quit almost winning and start winning. They could beat the Packers and Malik Willis and Jordan Love go down. I don't even know if they beat them still. It, it's, it's, in, in the, that's I'm, how I'm, disturbed I am by this coaching staff. I'm, I'm glad the Bears have a lot of time between now and then, but it's, Time to start putting the pieces together. It, 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 to me, it's about continuity. I think that they need to start, like, just having that trust in chemistry that produces better offenses. Like, you see... Um, offense, can so. we both agree the main concern I have, Caleb starts saying, I'm going to play hero ball. And that can work, and that can backfire on you big time. And we knew a quarterback that used to play hero ball and it backfired. And his name was Jay about, Cutler. Yeah, Jay Cutler. So we, we've seen it, and it, it can work because we knew Cutler. Listen, when it came down to the fourth quarter, we knew Cutler could lead us down for a drive. Like, I've seen him do it before, but a lot of times he'd throw a pick when he didn't need to. Yeah. So it's just I don't want to see what I'm worried about right now is Caleb starts picking up bad habits because he's forced to. And that's what worries me. He didn't pick up any so far. He looked phenomenal in week three. He was calling off. He was calling the blitzes at the line. He was checking protections. He was calling audibles. He was doing what he had to do. He looked like a quarterback when he had time to throw. It's just, you know, let's see what they do. This is the worst defense in the league by statistic. This is the 31st ranked points allowed, 32nd in, in yards allowed. 30, 29th in passing yards allowed, 30th in touchdowns allowed, passing touchdowns. So, and this is, I believe, if I'm right, the worst run defense next to the Colts. So, yeah, you guys... To not suck. The problem is, this coaching staff is that bad. Well, we'll just see. My X factor, Josh, is uh, going off what you're saying. Protect... You gotta, you gotta. Well, oh, I think Caleb will line. have a good game. I'm not against worried about that. Defensive line, they gotta protect because it's a good. The Rams have a good young defensive line, and they're gonna bring pressure. But they gotta give Caleb enough time to throw. They gotta give, uh, whether it's Swift, Herbert, Johnson, they gotta get those guys some blocks, and uh, they gotta. The offensive line has to make it so they can even execute the scheme because you know. You, you talk about that option play on uh, fourth down. That was oh, right. ugh, that was disturbingly bad. But what if the entire offense wasn't put on their ass and they could actually get out and block? Then it's not that dumb of a play. 
you know, like it, it, it kind of all feeds into itself where like the, the linemen got to do their job. I don't know who the offensive line coach is, but that's the guy I want on the hot seat. Get somebody, get Big Cat Williams, Nolan Cruz in there and say, fix them. So we'll see what that, but you got to protect. And so big X factor for me is performance of the offensive line. Uh, next X factor for me is, like you said, horrible pass defense, horrible run defense. I want to see this Bears veteran wide receiver unit, whether it's it's or just receiving unit, not just wide receivers, but Komet, DJ Moore, Keenan Allen. I want them to absolutely torch these guys because they're not that good. And then my final X factor, Josh, and I feel like it might be the most important. This game's at Soldier Field. Feed off the energy. It's easier to win at home. Get some swagger back, and then. You go into the next week and you're two and two instead of one and three, and it's time to get some teeth. It's time to wake up. Season's coming along now. NFC North isn't exactly looking invincible. There's some damn good teams on it right now. Don't get me wrong, but Packers got injury issues. The Lions uh, got some injury issues. Vikings look damn good, but get ready. There, there. It's a maybe the best division in football, but there's beatable teams. And you got to start making some noise and you got to start getting some out of division wins to really give yourself a chance. Cause when you do get in the gauntlet of the North, it's going to be really hard. My X factors are going to be the coaching staff. It's going to come down to who coaches better. And I'd give that edge to the Rams right now. Eber Flues proved me wrong. Challenge a competent play and don't lose a timeout. Decide if you're going for one or for two, instead of calling a timeout before you go for one or two and then missing the dang play. Um, I would go there. Second, I'm going to go with the defense. I need to see some turnovers. Matthew Stafford, not the best player at Soldier Field. We've seen it. He's not great at Soldier. So let's see what we can do. Let's see what he can do when he comes back to his old stomping grounds. Get after him. I need to see some. I need to see some sacks. I need to see some pressures. This is going to be on the defense again. I need to see them step up. And third, I'm putting it on. I'm putting it on the running game. I need to see 125 yards tomorrow. Tomorrow, 125 yards. Rams, uh, some the offense is like this should be a feasting opportunity for the Bears defense, who have about the best secondary in the NFL right now. But Cooper Cup is out. Puka Nakua is out. Um, you got three offensive linemen hurt too. Um, not necessarily all of them are going to be out, but like. Tutu Atwell is your best wide receiver? Come on. I want to see Jalen Johnson. I want to see noise, man. I want to see Tyreek Stevenson. I want to see the defense take one to the house. I want to see the soldier field rocking. And uh, I, I want the uh, fans to legitimately have something to – where instead of like the nervous energy surrounding the team where it's like all the outside noise and people say, oh, you know, we're professionals who we don't pay attention to that. Like if half the city is talking about how you should get fired from your job, it's going to be a little stressful. I don't care what anyone says, but I want. You kind of had it coming with all the crap he's yeah, coached with. You just need to give these fans something to cheer about. And then that negative can turn into positive. And once this, we've seen it. Once these fans start to really buy in and get excited about the Bears, they feed off that energy, and all of a sudden, magical things can happen. They're not that far off. They almost beat the Texans. They should have beat the Colts. I'm pissed that they're one and two right now, but you can get to two and two when you got to. It's must win, Josh. It is a must win, plain and simple. That's all we got for you. Uh, we'll have to check in. Uh, you know, after after we see how this one goes down. Uh, until then. That's uh, Running with the Bears. See you next time.